Hello there, lovely soul. This is Infinity, and I want to welcome you to my website, or podcast, or YouTube. Uh, happy New Moon. It is February 11th, 2021, and it is currently 10.25 a.m. in the Pacific here on the New Moon. I actually think... This is oh, it's just occurring to me right now, and now I have to check. It's zero percent right now. I think this is exactly when. Oh my gosh! At ten forty-five. That's right. That's right. Well, this makes perfect sense now. <laughs> um, I'm usually guided to wait until we're at. Like it's close to zero percent with our or a hundred percent with our full moon and zero percent with our new moon, and at ten forty five this morning here in the Pacific is when we're at zero percent with our uh with our new moon, so we're basically there it is ten twenty five and I was just, I had, was just guided to just get to this ASAP, not really thinking about that. And I was going to get started, if you could hear my cards here in the background, I was going to get started and, I, and then it was guided, no, we're going to pull a Hidden Worlds Oracle card before we get started. Um, and right, right into our actual new moon here in real time. Now, one thing to, to note is that it does not have to be on the new moon that you do this meditation. It could be weeks later, and it's still effective for you in the now, and um, it's not necessary that, you know, that you, that you did it this day, okay? So you could do this at any time, anytime you're guided to, and in the future, if you work with me as a private client, I may very well guide you to this meditation to do, and it could be two months later, and that's because of the work that's done here is important regardless of when you do it. So, we're going to get into this with a... What happened to my music? Oh. Ah, there we go. Uh, we're going to get into this with a Hidden Worlds Oracle, and then we'll jump right into the meditation. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. Looks like two cards just... Blue. Oh, wow. These are two really awesome cards. I've never actually seen before. Uh, I don't always look at all my Oracle cards and because I like surprises and because I'm really psychic, it's hard to surprise me. And so Oracle cards <laughs> are the way that I get surprised. You know, it's the little things. And so this is the Hidden Worlds Oracle, and we just got two cards, not just one. So we have card number 30, Sacred Journey, Introversion, Seeker, Self-Knowledge. And then we got card number six, the Light Priestess, Galactic Wisdom, Cosmic Ritual. I think we will start with card number six, the Light Priestess. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I love it when I get... I love getting... I it's The same cards tend to, tend to pop, um, you know, just as we're going through time in a certain place in time, and then it shifts, so it's cool when that happens. So page number 46 and 47 of the Hidden World... Oracle of the Hidden World uh, by Lucy Cavendish. Card number six, The Light Priestess, Galactic Wisdom, Cosmic Ritual... Okay, before you is a temple, a gateway to the realms of light, and it is broken. It is being restored, rebuilt with every moment that you give to your own restoration and well-being. As you do this, likewise, this temple will be restored by the light priestess. She who weaves the rays and brings back to us the codes of our origins. All you need to do is focus on the light within and without you. 
spend time within the light, the sunlight pouring through our own energetic gateways, the moonlight healing, cleansing, resembling, reassembling every cell. The light priestess will ensure you receive the light that will reignite the cosmic fires within you and restore all that seems broken and in disrepair. She builds the temple of the spirit, and as you build yours, the temple she safeguards will be repieced until it once again is the gateway for the people of this earth to understand their place in the cosmos. Observe the subtle light all about you, the play of light on water, the reflections off windows, the prisms and lanterns and rays that imbue our world with wonder and messages from the depths of the universe oh my gosh that gets me really emotional <laughs> that's crazy wow i just started getting these pictures of all these really beautiful scenes Whew, with light it was very very overwhelming um Oh, allow the planets to connect with you re-engage with your starry self, your cosmic being, your eternal essence that is the light from a thousand stars. You are a temple and you are restoring the gates between the worlds with every offering you make to your own well-being, to your spirit. Oh my goodness, I'm really emotional. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't sure. I didn't know I was so emotional. <laughs> Ah, uh, sorry. Um, you are a temple and you are restoring the gates between the worlds with every offering you make to your own well being, to your own spirit. I just saw that I just keep seeing things. It's making me emotional. It's not necessarily it's like what I'm reading is connecting me to things and visions and then I'm getting emotional. Um, <laughs> I guess that's how that works. And illumination, starborn one. Your temple is not broken. It is being rewoven from the thousand lights of the fantasy world you once were a part of. Live this life, but in this moment, remember your origins and the divine path you will take home. Oh, wow. That is really powerful. So a few things came here. Um to re-engage with your starry self. Well, first off, let's back up even a little bit more. Allow the planets to connect with you. So immediately, I saw how we have the stellium right now, the six-planet stellium um, going on, uh, the sun, the moon, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mercury. And... Shit. I think Mars. Damn, I'm gonna have to look that up. I, I keep ha I keep for interchanging the planets that's in the stellium every time I think about it, and I'm having such a hard time with it. I don't know why it's straight. It's only six. It's not that hard. <laughs> I can't do it. Um, anyway, so that came into uh, that came into my my mind right there, and. Uh, I'm going to look this up right now, as a matter of fact. And so so we're definitely with this new moon, with six planets in Aquarius, um, including the moon. It's very, it's very telling that, and it's really interesting to, this is the first time I've ever seen this card. We're getting it here on the new moon. Uh we're here on this portal, this 11 portal with, um, with this new moon and the energy is coming through. Oh, sorry. I'm looking this up and it's like, just give me. Okay, there we go. 
the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn. Oh, Venus. Venus. That's why do I keep forgetting Venus? I love Venus so much. That's also part of the, maybe the emotions, <laughs> the, the feelings of love coming through with this stellium. Okay, I feel better now. <laughs> it's like, I really need to get this straight. Six planets, sun, moon, Mer- Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn. They're all in Aquarius at this time with this new moon. So it's really powerful. A lot of energy coming through the sign of Aquarius as we're entering the age of Aquarius, as we're at the beginning of this year, 2021, uh, and building the foundation for a future literally on the light codes coming in. It's all been about clearing energy, making yourself more healthy energetically so you can receive the light codes coming in, so you can collapse the lower level frequency or the lower fre- frequency um, timelines in your in your tree of life branches. You have timelines and so you can collapse lower level ones that would take you to different places, different timelines, but you're past that, so you're up on your on your tree of life, you're higher, so you have higher branches you can get to. And in order to do that, you need to raise your frequency. You need to learn um, your body, your, your mind, your spirit, how things work, what's attached to you. Um, you have to really connect with, with the spiritual, with your with your divine counterparts, with your soul, with your higher self, like all this stuff needs to take place so you can see and feel and experience the world differently than you did before you started to spiritually awaken. And what we're doing here with this stellium, with this new moon and these next 11 days, um, and this entire month actually, like I was saying, this entire month of of February has been about um, renewal, rebirth, um, solitude, uh, letting go of programs, being afraid of love, um, all of this stuff that's very, very about, all about uh, becoming somebody and something new. And changes happening. A lot of changes happening. That's been that's been a thing. Uh, the theme as well. So changes, new beginnings, rebirth, uh, resurrection, illumination um, on your own self, um, but also creation. And so that's also why the theme of cord cutting has been so prevalent. Uh, if you follow me, if you talk to me, um, I. I wrote an article, uh, I think it was at the very beginning of the year, the very end of last year, about cord cutting, and then I was guided to turn it into an ebook. That went along with a few other ones, and um, every client that's um, come to me has been, and to work with me privately for my Evolve Now program, it's a really in-depth healing um, program has been guided to um, to definitely do some cord cutting as much as they can through my guided astral meditation that is on my podcast after they read the book and do their inventory of what needs to be be cut um, people situations experiences um, it doesn't have to be just people because our energy is connected to the Um, events of our past not just people so this is what like PTSD is Um, it's an energetic cord that's connected to you and to a place in time that's very active and it just needs a little spark to be triggered and then boom you're right there so that's how energy works PTSD is actually a really good example of energy and how powerful energy is in the body is what it evokes for people so anyway cord cutting is extremely important and when I was reading this right here um, this 
So, you are a temple and you are restoring the gates between the world. And with every offering, you make your own well-being to your own spirit. So, that's really what cord cutting is about. And we travel, we astral travel uh, to the healing temple. Um, that uh, is all, That is a card here in the Hidden Worlds Oracle, the Healing Temple, and then when, after I got that card, I'm not sure exactly what the what the time period was right now, but when I was guided to do the cord cutting, boom, we went to the Healing Temple, and I was like, oh, okay, there we go, it was really interesting. So it's a beautiful um, guided astral meditation healing practice that you do by my guide, my guidance and um, you do it before you go to bed not too soon before you normally go to bed so you don't fall asleep so you need to be pretty awake so you stay awake but in that practice you very much connect with the higher dimensions with a place like the healing temple you connect with with your guides you connect with spirit animals you connect with um, with your angelics, you connect with um, a crystal, you integrate with a crystal, it feels amazing. Um, and then you travel to this very amazing sacred place that's just love, that's meant to promote love for yourself, to help you through this through this healing. So it's all about what you do there to do bring back the energy to your body so i highly suggest and just keeps coming up it's been like on my daily meditation on my dailies that i do i do a energy update and <coughs> spiritual guidance every day and it's been like the last three days the theme with our guides coming through and it is the most it's just been so intensely like people need to do this. People need to do this. So please read the ebook. Um, it's free. Do your inventory and get started or continue with cord cutting. Uh, and if you, you may feel it's necessary to do them over again, you know, with some of them, um, do that because cords get restored very easily. So, especially if there's, like, active people in your life, you may need to continuously do that just to reset energies. It's a big reset in energies. It's bringing, it's cutting off the, the energy to each other. It's disengaging, pulling the energy back, feeling that in the, bo in the body, raising your vibration because you have more life force in your body. And... Even if a cord reconnects like two days later, the very next day, whatever, that's fine. That's really, really, that has, that's kind of beside the point. It's also, um, it's just also something to note, you know, how you're, you know, how you're feeling after. It's, you'll very much feel it in the body. So anyway, um, it's really important to, to work on your own healing because that's how you restore your connections. That's how you raise your vibration. That's how you connect to these counterparts that we have on the other side that really take us into you know, our sacred knowing and sacred places that we um, definitely have access to. We just need to get to that floor, so to speak. <laughs> like, you know, it's like access to the top the top floors in a in a high rise. You need you need that access. So it's about working through the levels to get there. And cord cutting is one of the best and easiest, quickest ways to start restoring your energy, disconnecting from past people and events that are no longer in your life, help you disconnect help you maintain disconnect being disconnected. <clears throat> not allowing your energy to be taken, not allowing people to just pop into your energy field and send you telepathic messages so freely because you have these energy cords still very active and that's a big, big thing that people just don't think about. 
So, I will stop with all that. But anyway, the Light Priestess. So, this is about... really um connecting with the light in our world uh not like if you one of the things that came through the other day about light um was uh, i don't think i've actually published it yet because i'm working on an article that's like it's probably gonna end up being 20 20 signs that your third eye is opening and one of them is that you're very sensitive to light. And so people tend to avoid the light or really use sunglasses when they're out all the time. But it's really important to let the light filter into your eyes and, and your body and your system without anything, um, you know, between you and the light, like sunglasses. It doesn't have to be all the time. And it's probably going to be really hard at first because if you wear sunglasses all the time, you're very sensitive to light, especially natural light and sunlight. So it's a really good idea to just kind of force yourself to, um, unless you have some type of, you know, serious eye condition where you should not do that. Um, but aside from that, it's just a sensitivity issue. And yes, light had the sunlight, the light rays coming through have, have gotten way brighter, way more intense than they were um, in the past. That's for different reasons, but uh, that I won't go into right now. But it is important to allow the natural light to filter through to get as much natural light as you possibly can during the day. So if you if your place that you're living in is more dark, do what you can to let as much light in, open up the light for your for yourself um, where you're at. Okay, so light is very important. Taking in natural light, going out in nature, connecting with the light that um, comes through. Observe the subtle light all around you and play the play of light on water, the reflection off windows, the prisms um, and lanterns and rays that imbue our world with wonder and, and messages from the depths of the universe. So, um, again, allow the planets to reconnect with you. So, light, light, light coming through. Okay, I'm going to move on. Card number 30. Another brand new card. And remember, these cards literally flew, almost landed in my tea, <laughs> on the table. Okay. 30, sacred journey, introversion, seeker, self-knowledge. Oh, my God, I love this. Page number, uh, pages 94 and 95. Okay, here we go. You have walked alone for some time now. You have turned inwards to the that great path that lies inside of us all and have taken its many uh, tributaries into the soul of your own self. You have discovered the things so many hide from themselves and you have brought them to the surface, examined them and found their beauty and their sorrows. And after knowing them, integrating them, you've gone deeper still. This is a shout out to those of you who have traveled with me in the past, who have especially worked with me one-on-one -on -one in healings. That definitely is a shout out to you. But to whomever that, that does that kind of really deep work. Okay, within that silent place at the heart of you, there is another temple, the temple of your soul, where your precious, most sacred, secret heart has laid in waiting for you. A sleeping beauty, a wise wizard at the gate of your truth, and you have kissed your soul and accepted the truth of yourself. With this comes a reawakening and a return to the world. Now your stillness and repose with all the world has seen but not understood will begin to express the wisdom it found at the heart of you. Too many journey outwards, expecting to find the answers outside, in gurus and teachers and places and other people, in medicines and therapies, and all have their part to play. But if we do not seek the chalice within, we cannot drink from the cup of our soul. 
the crystalline waters of ourself, and this, friend, you have done. The journey you have taken within has been challenging and full of risk, but you have made it to the center of you. And now that you know what treasure lies within, you can rise again and re-enter the world and know fully who you are and why you are here. Oh my God, this is so freaking good. (laughs) This is so good. This is so along the lines of the kind of stuff that I'm always talking about. You know, it's always about learning the truth of who and what you are. What what is at the very very seed of your soul, and and how that connection sits within you in your own body, in your mind, in your spirit, in your intention to receive the knowledge of of those questions why am I here what's my life purpose who am I what what kind of experiences have I had before this lifetime and as you ask those questions guess what you start getting the answers the whole ask and you shall receive thing that definitely starts with asking those questions first And then things start to open up for you to get those answers. And then you just have to accept what comes and let that integrate and process through your your logic, your personality, your ego, and all that shit. (laughs) That is a construct that that had to be built in order to work in this world. But it's not the real you. The real you is your soul. And in order to fully step into who you are, you need to know what that is. And there's a lot of different ways that we journey to that place to find who that is and what that is. And I think people tend to make it a lot more complicated than it is because that's just the nature of people. (laughs) We tend to make things a lot more complicated than they need to be pretty much in all facets of life. The answers are always right there if we choose to accept them, connect with the divine wisdom that we always have at our disposal. But we tend to seek outside reassurance and logic and reason and proof and, and, and all of that. And, and, you know, it just doesn't work that way. Not, not really, because there's so much about creation as a whole that is just magical. And from a human perspective, it's very hard to, logically connect dots and be like, there you go, one plus one equals two, ta-da! Because it's not always that cut and dry. Um, And our perspective from this position is very limited until we go within, until we rise to the higher dimensions doing different types of of meditative and astral work and, and physical energy type work to allow for us to rise. One of the things that came through, I think it was two days ago from our guides, um, because I channel in messages every day, is about, like, a picture that you're a balloon, and a balloon full of oxygen, and and it's meant uh, to rise, but there's these hoses that are connected to the balloon, and it's sucking on on the air, pulling the air out of the balloon, how is the balloon supposed to rise and be that beautiful, buoyant, blissful thing that just goes higher and higher and higher? It can't. So that's what, like, Cord, that's what was, like, an analogy to understand why it's so important to disengage, cut cords, I don't like that term, but that's the term everybody uses and everybody knows, so that's what we say. 
so again, <laughs> we're back to you know this having to be to be on this path to go through this. You've gone. You've had to do some really serious work, and um, and that takes being able to to rise into this and keep going. And after knowing them, integrating them, you've gone deeper still because then it becomes, I need more. I need to know more. I need to connect more dots. I need more information. I need more awareness of, of what I'm doing here and what I am and my abilities to be uh, more advanced, broader, my knowledge, my awareness needs to you know continue to grow it's our evolution and all the while we're receiving light codes we're healing our bodies we're changing from carbon to crystalline um and we're becoming more light ourselves literally we're more refract refractive and reflective we can project out energy our energy and our light and our power better and better every single day um, so this is why we'll come under psychic attack, why the, you know, dark things will happen, why there'll be chaos and different things. And trust me, people, in the last few months, it's been a lot of people coming to me with this problem because the lighter we, the, the lighter we are and the lighter we, and the, and the higher we rise through our light, uh, the more everyone rises through their light because we're reflecting off of each other and humanity is rising in consciousness and of course there's resistance of course there's going to be turmoil and chaos to really fight that and that's what we're seeing in different in different places around the world uh and a lot of a lot of things to you know just personally with us to to push us down and we just have to to understand that that that's a thing and we need to to do what we can very intentionally acknowledge the situation that's one of my or a couple of my ebooks too the spiritual war the light and the dark your energy and your place in it um please read that and the other one is uh what is psychic attack and how to eliminate negative energy and there's a ton of information in both of them extremely important for you to have and understand so you can work with your energy as best as possible so all right family with this 33 minutes almost we are going to get going into our meditation um i'll let you know that my my doggy is here my cats are here so if you hear noise in the background that is what that is so please just let that I only I'm in a room with just one cat and my dog so I'm I'm more isolated and so without further ado let's get into it I want to if you if you're new to my meditations uh, we're astral we're going astral it's called a guided astral meditation because we're really uh, moving our consciousness from our bodies into higher places so it's uh, astral projection meditation because we'll always be taken from by Gaia um, almost a hundred percent of the time to different places um, here upon her and um, sometimes above her <laughs> Uh, but uh, we also work in the body with the chakras and all of that so the body will get very energized maybe get itchy tingly you may get itchy in your head as your third eye and your crown starts to activate um, may get itchy in your back around your shoulder blades that's where your energetic wings from your heart chakra needs to come out um, so if you start to get itchy in your back, just tell your heart, I'll, I'll walk you through that if I start feeling, if I'm guided to when we're in there, but we want to 
pull the or allow the energy from your heart chakra to leave the back and um, and kind of open up and they're called your energetic wings so your heart chakra energy is and gets to a point as you raise your vibration, as your as your chakras continue continue to open and expand, receive light and energy, um, and especially the heart chakra. It's very it's impossible, <laughs> impossible to keep all that energy in the body and maintain a high frequency. You need to move it because it'll start to you'll start to get neck and back issues, your shoulders, and you know just it'll be constant pain because there's just so much energy trapped and it and nothing works to fix that except for moving the energy out of the body through the energetic wings once you do that all's good because the energy is allowed to leave the body and it also acts like further antenna for you to pick up um, psychically so have that intention opening up the heart chakra to a point where it's connecting through it's going through your back opening up like these zippers on each side of your it's called your rhomboid that's right where your shoulder blades are it's about five six inches from the very top to the very bottom of your shoulder blades on either side of your spine you just want to envision opening up that like two zippers just and just let them open up and see the energy go out of them um, and it can just come out like Kind of like lightning or just energy kind of coming out coming out coming out until it stabilizes or they can kind of unfurl like wings they can look different feel different and you can really start to work with them okay so there's that um and so the most important thing here is just to keep your eyes closed if it helps to put on a mask and i think i'm going to do that for myself if I can find my mask, which I always end up losing, all of the time. Nope, I don't know where it is. What do you know? <laughs> I can never, I, it's just impossible. I'm gonna look at, did I put it in my drawer? No, okay, Never mind. <laughs> but if you have one handy, uh, and it's, and it's, light or bright in in your room go ahead and and put on the eye mask just to keep your eyes closed uh, you know dark and closed uh, is kind of helpful and we're gonna just let me take a minute here because I've been doing so much talking <laughs> Just regulate. I'm going to continue to talk, obviously, so let me just regulate here before we get into, just to me take a moment. Okie dokie. So, what I'd like you to do is please do this in the seated position unless you're very uncomfortable in the seated position on the floor, on your bed, on a couch, seated, cross-legged. Um, because And you can get into the laying down position easily right after if you're really relaxed and want to lay down. But it's just going to keep you conscious more and and you remembering what what we did because as we travel into the higher dimensions through the traveling through the actual travel with our consciousness um, it's kind of like dreaming when you're when you're in it it's so vivid and you remember like every little detail but then like you'll forget after because it's you really it's really hard to filter everything down in so it's also a good idea to come back and listen to the meditation when you're not actually trying to meditate so you can consciously remember what happened um, because we could be getting into different activations and uh, I channel so I could be channeling we could be getting messages that are just hard to remember even for me as the channeler uh, kind of how that works is Kind of step aside and it's not your consciousness that's speaking you're just filtering it through 
And then afterwards, it's kind of hard to remember all of what was said, <laughs> especially if you're doing that for a few of them, which I've done that in these meditations where I'll channel for two or three different divine beings and um, it's even difficult for me to remember it all. So anyway, I think that's it. So we can get started here. Let's just take a moment to welcome and thank our guides and guardians, yours, mine, and ours, that we are brought to this place together today on this new moon to 11 2021 so just take a moment here to think about just going back to the beginning of the year 1 1 2021 and kind of taking your way to the present and these last 10 days and now we're on the 11th day of February and we are being brought to this place in space and time to do this meditation practice for this new moon and I'm kind of seeing us like <laughs> an interesting visual but like a corkscrew I guess you could say it's that that like uh, um, oh my goodness that like a tube torus going down um, but I'm really seeing it like a corkscrew because it's like imagine your energy like coming down, connecting with you and acting like a corkscrew and just driving it into Gaia. So I really see it like a corkscrew. So just kind of imagine your field, your energy really, really very intentionally like a corkscrew just going in going in that clockwise direction and just really embedding in with Gaia so wherever you're at even if you're in a high rise on the second or third floor or on the actual ground on some grass uh, it doesn't matter where you are just imagine your energy and it coming down through your entire field like a corkscrew and going down into Gaia and as it does it lights up electrically inside the earth of Gaia and you can just see the electricity going out you can see Gaia's pulses of energy come up and this is what I've been seeing a lot lately she's been talking about these boosts of energy and so what I'm seeing is like these pulses of energy coming up from the center and just radiating out and just pulses of energy. So as your energy starts to corks corkscrew down, her energy is coming up. So we're starting with that. So already kind of intense here. Really want to see and feel our guides and guardians, and of course, most closely, our guardian angels coming in very, very tight around us. I'm kind of seeing like them forming a circle around us, each and every one of us, and is creating this tube of light. So they are about three feet out from us so they're not right right on top of us I'm hearing and I'm feeling that our energy is going to get pretty big here but they're creating this tube of light all the way around us about three feet out it's also going down into the ground connecting with Gaia and it's going straight up 
and we are inside of this chamber tube portal however you want to, to call it and And it has a very kind of low um, to high, just, just, and of course we're feeling that energy. We're inside this tube and this is really creating, they're saying, I keep hearing chamber of light. So, so chamber of light. I've not seen this kind of thing before, quite honestly. Um... A chamber of light so they're saying your my our own light is coming out and it's reflecting off of this wall of light the light the wall the wall is is made of light and we have light that's going to be coming down through this tube through this chamber that we're in so just take a moment and let that all come in and you can um, see this from different perspectives, from being inside of it, looking up. Of course, keep your eyes closed, but look up with your third eye, with your with your astral vision here, and see how we're just how the light just goes up and up and up infinitely. And you can see like you're on also a bed of light. Just what we're sitting on is light. There's just so much light. And just let that permeate through your entire system. If you start seeing any flashes with your eyes closed, that is negative energy lifting. Um, you may start just opening up and really think about your third eye and it being an actual eyeball. So think of it, think of it like it has an eyelid, even though it doesn't. Your pineal gland does not have an eyelid, but it has everything else that your eyes have. It works like, like an eye. So imagine it just opening up. Like when you, you know, first wake up in the morning or from a nap and yeah, it's super bright, but just have the intention of continuing to open up your third eye and to get used to that. And now we're really going to get into our chakras now that we're really embedded in this field of light might start feeling pressure on the head, pressure on the face, tingly or itchy in the back of the head. That is your third eye. Also your crown chakra coming online, activating with the, with the light coming through and the light codes all coming through. I'm hearing, please remember and think about, um, or just to let you know, I guess, to have in your awareness and your intention to, they, what we're doing here is to help integrate and connect and ground with Gaia so we can receive her energy, her, reg her helping us regulate with energy um, as, as time goes on, and especially in these next 11 days up until the, the 222 portal where we're going to be having another meditation I'm getting a whole lot of information how our new moon today is so very intertwined and connected with our, our 222 date, 11, 11 days to this day and 11 days from this day. So we're doing these jumps. So think about integrating new light codes for timelines. Think about um, releasing any uh, attachments to lower level timelines um, and it's all about new beginnings rejuvenation resurrection illumination again those themes that have been coming through all month long 
is what we're what we're working on here today is what I'm being shown so we want to get into our chakras we're going to start with our root chakra I want to um, hone in on that place in your body at the very very base of your spine down down low and just see that beautiful red color start to appear and get brighter and just let it continue to glow and flow and get big and open and you can see this from the outside perspective just taking over your entire bottom like pelvis area and that energy goes up into your uh, sacral chakra orange beautiful orange color sacral chakra so we're opening up the channels of energy from the very bottom letting energy flow down the legs all the way down opening up the bottoms of the feet rising up with the energy to our solar plexus chakra yellow to just imagine just turning on like a dimmer switch with the light and it's just getting bigger and bigger all of these um, chakras and all of the colors of the chakra chakras blending together so I might just start feeling warm in general in the lower regions and uh, just let it continue to get big and feel into that warmth, connecting with your energetic body and your energy centers, opening them up. Say, I release and I receive. You can say that to yourself or out loud. I release and I receive, just allowing energies to filter through um, this chamber of light that we're in. Remember that's what is holding and anchoring us are our beautiful divine angelics our guardian angels miracle angels and healing angels all working together and i just see them just it's interesting the way that they work it's like they're stationary but they're spinning around us super super fast like they're running around us but they're all in one you know stationed around us and it's like we have a um a diamond shape so a mirrored pyramid and we're in the center of it is what they're showing me now so see yourself in the center of this chamber and there's these lines of light that are going through kind of the I guess well it's etheric but it's also kind of lighting up within Gaia so it'll go like straight out let's say like from each knee into a point um, in front of us and then behind us and we're just like in this diamond shape they're showing me how um, on the second of the month uh, the information coming in for what was going on with our energy and why we we're feeling so heavy our heads hurt maybe just had this weird sensation and headache um, for that day I certainly did was that we have like this huge diamond uh, it, like embedded in the center of our crown chakra and that halo and it's just pulling down light codes directly through our spinal column, through our ascension column, going straight down. Um, so, I'm, so I just saw that. Uh, so they're saying, please be aware of this big diamond right on top, right inside, literally inside our crown chakra and receiving all of this light energy. So that came in just as we're like getting into our solar plexus chakra. So we want to, so we're integrating with this, with these light codes coming in through this diamond. And diamonds are single refractive. And so the light doesn't split, it stays in a straight line. So it's going straight down through us, through the diamond. So if the top of your head or your whole head or up to your neck and your shoulders start to feel pressure, that's what that is so just breathe into it 
So just let that come down and go straight down, activating our upper chakras to really um, all like our heart chakra, throat chakra, third eye. I kind of see it like opening up, blossoming like a flower, letting that energy start to really move through the body. I'm feeling those tingles in my back. So really activating that heart chakra. So see that beautiful green get start to just turn on right in the center of your body. You can take your awareness to the outside of yourself so you're looking at you and seeing you in all of this light. See that beautiful green emerald. You can even kind of see it. I'm seeing like you can see this a crystal, this emerald starting to take shape and form right in the center of your chest and just getting bigger and bigger and that energy coming out through your wings, down your arms and your hands, up into your chest, up into your neck, up into your jaw is all of the area and space that the heart chakra energy goes through. So see yourself lighting up with this beautiful light going all through your arms, your shoulders, your hands, your elbows, your wrists, your hands, your feet fingers, open up the palm of your hands, your hand chakra, so you can kind of see that opening up just from the center out on both sides, and just project and send out beautiful heart energy or heart chakra, green energy out through your hands, kind of you can see it like a... a like a flashlight, just energy emanating from your hands. Same thing from your back and your wings, just energy coming out. And just take that in with the diamond light going down, with the chamber of light all around you. And your own energy just expanding and growing. And say again, I release and I receive. And same thing with your throat chakra, really starting to activate now. So I see this as like a turquoise crystal, beautiful turquoise crystal. And you can see that starting to activate, spinning, expanding the light, just getting bigger. Of course, it's going to get way bigger and outside of our throats. So it's going to take over our heads and really blend in with the heart chakra energy. And just letting it expand up the up the head, up the face, down into blending with your heart chakra into your your chest and your neck, your back. So it's like you have this whole like hood thing going on, but it's all over this blending going over each other with the green, with the blue. And back to our third eye, really seeing your third eye as open now, used to the light, taking it all in, getting stronger, connecting with your two regular eyes so that you may see through the third eye even when your eyes are open and colors are brighter even. So you can imagine yourself seeing through your third eye, seeing through the prism, of your third eye to your two regular sight eyes and seeing the world, seeing the universe, seeing yourself, feeling energy through the third eye, opening up. So that beautiful indigo color, uh, sparkly, glittery, effervescent, just energy, just emanating from the center of your brain, your cranium, leaving your head and your skull. So just see the saturation, the density of your head and how hard that is actually. And just see it getting really thin. So turn down the saturation of your entire body, not just your head. Just take that down. Just 
feel into the energy and let the energy expand outwards. That indigo color from the center of your head expanding outwards, all taking over your entire head and going up and out. All of the energy from all of your chakras, just see it kind of like cotton candy, just big and light and airy and just getting big and big and big, just all straight from your root chakra going down your legs blending with the orange of your sacral, blending with the yellow of your solar, and blending with the green of your heart chakra, and blending with the indigo, sorry, the blue of your throat chakra, and then blending with the indigo, and then finally the violet of your crown chakra. Just you're going to open that up get that really really nice and big as I'm feeling our diamond in our crown chakra getting even bigger and expanding able to take in more light now I'm hearing since we're working and got into all of our chakras just really creating again I'm hearing chamber of light chamber of light chamber of light so repeat, I am in my chamber of light. I am engaged with all of my chakras. They are open, flowing, connecting with each other, expanding and aligning, receiving of energies coming from our divine source mother father god through our galactic center and central sun through our entire core of our universe and through to our solar system all of the grouping of planets in the stellium for aquarius coming through with so much air energy See all of this coming through and connecting with each and every one of us in our own chambers of light. So really take your perspective, perspective up and out of your body. Let's satellite up higher and higher. And let's pretend no matter what, it's just kind of we turn down the light a little bit so we can see see all of who's going to be working with this and let's just say again I'm seeing the the number 500 500 light souls connecting with this energy in this way whether they're fully conscious of it or not just see these souls all throughout Gaia with their own chambers of light And remember that corkscrew that we started with? Just really integrating all of this energy in with that. Going straight down into Gaia. And sending that out to the rest of our brothers and sisters of the light. The incarnates that are to receive these encodements that are coming through. That are not quite yet there and conscious and awake. So this will help them to awaken. This will help us to solidify and connect with the abundance matrix within Gaia. Um, in her crystalline grid. And then it's also mirrored um, up and through and around her field. So it's right inside of the atmosphere. And it is also violet and light. And the way that it is shown to me is that it's a grid within Gaia. It's a grid above Gaia. And there's light going back and forth all the time um, from the grid embedded in her and the grid above her. So it'd be kind of like her bones and her skin, if you want to think about it kind of like that. And the light just reflecting back and forth and in and through us as well. That is the abundance matrix. And the higher we get in, in our vibration, the more we're able to embed into that abundance matrix. We're able to disengage, deprogram from the material matrix, that 3D material matrix that 
keeps us in fear, keeps us um, in chaos and turmoil and worry and stress and, and anxiety, keeps us ill with negative energy, connected by cords to traumas and past events and even um, parasites, energetic parasites, entities that take from our energy field. So we want to really um, be aware of all of that from the material matrix and we want to disengage, engage with the abundance matrix and help us on our journey to leave those lower level timelines and energies in the past as we move forward. Remember, this new moon is for new beginnings, a new us, a resurrection within the self and where we're going and what we're doing in and with our lives, with our own energy, what we're projecting out, what we're uh, connected to in our world. So just connect to that. An entire bed and umbrella of energy and receiving all of that energy in and through and to us. Nice deep cleansing breath. Keep it nice and easy and in flow. And if anything feels tight, uh, just breathe right into that space and let it come up. Say, I release and I receive. I release and I receive. And as this energy from the diamond coming in, going straight down, embedded and um, going out in a web of light throughout Gaia, connecting us to each other and to Gaia, receiving her pulses of light coming straight up, connecting to her own diamond grid, and just sending these pulses out throughout her entire system within her body and out to each and every one of us, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. Extending the light, the love, the messages from our guides and guardians to awaken, to connect, to go on that sacred soul journey of recognition, rebirth, renewal, deep, deep healing. Just remember, as we heal one, we heal all. And now I want you to see there in the center of your chest the light that's starting to form is I'm seeing this as a beautiful amethyst so a beautiful purple however it may look to you but a beautiful purple crystal beautiful amethyst Kind of spinning, coming into form right in the center of our chest, right in our heart chakra, amplifying, purifying, stabilizing our heart chakra, and sending this energy out all the way. So basically what I'm seeing is this diamond light coming down, or the light coming down in and through the diamond, the diamond light coming down through our heart, or sorry, through our crown chakra, through the pineal, reflecting out through the pineal, blowing away as much negative energy and and density, calcification in through our, our third eye. So you may start getting 
drippy or nasally or sneezing. Um, so just let that go. Breathe into it. We're going to feel that go straight down through our heads into and through our throat chakras and down into the heart chakra. But then now we're hitting that amethyst. So we're going to send this energy and let it then reflect through the amethyst all the way down through our entire body, sending this beautiful diamond light, reflecting and refracting all throughout our crystalline structures within our bodies, going down through the rest of our, of our bodies. I'm really feeling the crystals in, I, I've really not... I've, I've seen and worked with crystals in astral before, but this is very, very different the way that I'm seeing it now. Just really embedded within our own structure. So it was the turquoise in the throat, the diamond in the crown, feeling the amethyst in our chest with our heart chakras. Let's see if anything else is coming through, taking shape and form within the system. You may get your own, but um, it's best to just not go too far ahead unless it's already shaping and forming for you. That may be the case. I'm hearing what we need right now, the energies that we need right now to help us. So universally... For each and every one of us, and you can embed your own atop of this, I'm hearing, if you're so guided. But we're going to go through the rest of the chakras with crystal energy embedded within us. So I'm seeing with our... Um, With our third eye, I'm hearing serpentine, serpentine coming through with our third eye, really helping for greater awareness. It's a beautiful blue, whitish, um, sorry, no, serpentine, yes, 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 serp, I'm getting confused with, with my different crystals here, they're coming in really quickly. Serpentine, beautiful, and this beautiful bluish, whitish. Green. Taking shape and form in and with our third eye. So however you may see that, I'm also seeing it. Seeing that for some people it could be lapis coming in for the third eye. And then lapis lazuli for the third eye. So you could be seeing one or both. And getting down into the uh, the solar plexus. Feeling citrine here, beautiful, clear, yellow, very bright crystal, really help us to open up and reflect this energy coming through and really it's kind of like um, just boosting the power, just feel the, the, the citrine if you're familiar with citrine, just feel that taking over that energy, taking over this entire area of your solar plexus. And how citrine can have those like rainbow inclusions in there and just so reflect the light and just light up everything. It's so beautiful to really integrate with that energy there at your solar plexus. Again, the amethyst at the chest, the turquoise at the throat, the serpentine there in the center of your, with your third eye. 
and then going down into the sacral, I am seeing and feeling carnelian, beautiful orange crystal, really helping us to tap in with our sacral and I'm really feeling let the crystal, the energy of the crystal as we're as we're connecting with the abundance matrix that is all about and through the crystals. So that's the abundance matrix really taking place in shape and form within the body is what I'm hearing. And helping us to connect with the abundance matrix is really um, feeling the energy of the crystals within our within our own body and field and energy centers and this will help us to um, bring in those bring in that light that's coming in and filter it through really connecting uh, and interweaving locking in with our energy centers at this time so again the carnelian So carnelian is so beautiful for helping us to connect with our creativity, to help ground us, to help awaken our passions. And then down there at the root, I'm seeing over and over obsidian, obsidian. It is a it is an opaque black crystal and it is fantastic for protection and clearing of negative energy which is what we need starting at the base starting at the root so everything from there um, up is nice and clear of negative energy and it just creates this really strong vibration around you it it, it pulls I'm seeing it connecting to each chakra as as you go up so feel the energy of the obsidian that strong defensive clearing energy wiping out negative energy just kind of sending it looks like a um, just like a like a funnel of energy and light but going up from the root and like another barrier of protection going from the bottom up so it would be like it getting smaller at the root and going bigger towards the crown and sending out this energy going straight up from the obsidian helping to protect and rejuvenate our energy through the other crystals so really they all working together starting at the root and now what I'm feeling is metal through our legs and our feet so just imagine um, just a mixture of metals So just uh, I'm seeing copper, it's starting with copper, bronze, silver, gold, everything weaving together and really forming up, kind of twisting around through our legs, down our feet, so we can conduct this energy coming up from Gaia and coming down through us and really see these metals weaving together like they're twisting all through our, um, around our bones. So as if you were taking your skeletal structure and just weaving these um, rods of metal all around every single bone. So you can be even more conductive with the energy. So just see that taking place and form all, all over your body all around your your legs your femurs going up around your hip bones every single disc your arms your shoulders each arm around your elbows down your wrists each finger just woven with this metal 
these rods of metal, you can see it all kind of blended together or each one separate kind of stacked or next to each other, however it is looking and feeling to you, but just feel the metal going through your body. So you can really conduct this energy. It's very intense, very powerful. So you may get a little woozy or pressure in the top of the head. There's so much going on. All the different crystals, obsidian, carnelian, citrine, amethyst. Turquoise, serpentine, and diamond. Going through your whole system, light codes and light channels of light coming down. And that those lines of light that we're sitting in, that that diamond that we're sitting in, and in the chamber of light, light going through the corkscrew down and bedding with Gaia, opening up, connecting with the abundance matrix. And now I want to take your attention up, 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 past the sky and the atmosphere of Gaia, down up into the sky where our beautiful moon is. And now it is at 0% as I record this meditation. Hopefully um, for you it will be very soon to that or very close to that. But again, as we said here at the top, it really doesn't matter when you do this. I want you to connect with the energy of the moon and her being dark in the sky. But you can still see her very well. She's just not lit up. And I want you to think about, because what I saw here real quick is, the, the, the moon phases. So just imagine you sitting in place, looking at, this, at the sky and the stars, starting here with this new moon, and just imagine 30 straight days of the moon phase going from new moon like we are today, and each day growing as it comes up into the sky, brighter, more light shining through, and each day taking in that light that's coming through. And going through the entire cycle, each and every day, those 30 days, so see one day, two days, Three days I'm just sitting in place and seeing the moon come up and each day it's bigger and brighter we're through more phases it going through its waxing phase and third quarter moon and half moon as it comes up in the sky how beautiful it is at that half moon taking in those balancing energies Really allowing for that dark and light, both of those energies to come through that shadow and light, that male and female, divine feminine, divine masculine, with that 50-50 moon, and then let it pass. We're going to continue. We're going to grow in intensity. Three-quarter moon phase. As it comes up, taking in the energies and getting closer and closer to the full moon, we just really want to integrate with the entire process and phase of the 30 days of the moon is what I'm seeing. Have the intention of connecting more and deeper to the moon and her cycles and how that is connected with Gaia and the abundance matrix and how that is so important to our energy every single day. 
including the other placements of our galactic family, of our planetary system and family, of all the other planets as well. But since the moon is our closest planet and has so much influence on us, filters through different energies at different times for us, it is so important to connect with our moon. To see it going through the entire rest of the phase to, you know, that full moon and just taking in all of the energies there and really letting it filter straight into the third eye, straight into the throat and just see these lines of light going all the way through each and every chakra, lighting up those crystals that we saw come to life within us. And whatever other crystals you happen to see and all of the metal that's woven through our our bones, remember we are of Gaia. We have metals and minerals and crystals within us. We are stardust and water. We are all of these things. We're just alchemizing it, taking shape, taking form as we connect it to her crystalline grid. So we connect and receive the pulses of energy coming up from her, our great mother Gaia. We can see, feel, and form and alchemize all of this energy within us. Really let it take shape and form and allow for it to conduct the energies to make us stronger to make that that connection clearer, less static, less fog, so we can get our guidance, feel our guidance, be confident in our awareness, in our energy, what we are feeling, so we can know what is us and what is outside of us, so we can know the depths of ourselves, seek out the truth through the pureness of the crystals, of the earth, of the air, of the water, of Gaia, so we can filter in these energies that come in through our moon. And today, it being a new moon, this meditation for new moon energies, we are connecting with the entire cycle as we're starting fresh and starting new, letting the past go. So I want you to imagine, just take into account just the beginning of this year from January 1 all the way through through to today, the 31 days of January, and today the 11 days of February, and you can add whatever days to the time that in which you're doing now, and what you are now, so add as many days as you need to. Starting fresh, starting new today, no matter where you are in the lunar cycle, what month you're in, what year you're in, want to connect just to and through this year of 2021. And I want you to, what I'm seeing here is like little bits of earth and clay coming into form. And I want you to make two piles with this clay. Thinking about your year so far. Thinking about these 40, what, uh, 42 days. And make two piles. One pile being any negative energies that you felt or been a part of in these last um, few weeks, only 41 days. And make another pile, everything positive. And see these, the shape of the clay for your negative and your positive piles of energy. Remember, we're starting new. We're starting fresh. We're releasing energies. So we're going to release energies that have anything, anything to do with a negative charge. Or we're going to start sparking it within us that we help us to release help us to heal. So I want you to see you uh, 
however way it, it works for you with lighting a match, I think is good. So see yourself lighting a match, the fire starting to come to life with a match, and taking the flame to the pile of clay there. And just let it catch fire. And let it melt away. I release negative energies that are still active from these days past. I let these energies transmute. I hand them over and back to Gaia. And you don't have to think too hard, just, you know, about any, any details or specifics necessarily. Just every, just for ever, all of it. Just letting any negativities go over these last days since we started this year. And then same thing with the positive pile. We're going to see all the positive energy that we've been connected to each and every day. Hopefully it's a much bigger pile than the negative one. We're going to light a match. And we're going to set fire to it because it still cleanses the energy. And we're going to integrate this beautiful, pure, positive energy and just see the, the mound of clay burning, burning, and this beautiful smoke rising and just breathing that in. Just imagine it smelling so sweet. Whatever scents come to you, it's what I'm seeing. And just burn it and smell it. All of that positive energy that you're associated with and attached to. Anybody you helped, anybody who helped you, the love that you felt, anything you grew, everything you cleaned, every love piece of love energy that you sent out, any kind of positivity you put into the world. See that as a nice big pile of energy and we're lighting it up, setting it aflame. Again, letting it be the, the, the energy to fuel us going forward. Breathing that in. Remember, Aquarius is an air sign. We're breathing in that air. Breathing in the energies of the positivity we are already connected to. And then what I want you to do, what I'm seeing is blowing out energy, lighting up the lines of light that you can see in front of you, connected to high vibrational timelines, and just see these lines of light going out all of your energy attached to it, all that positivity, breathing that in, taking that in, letting it become your life force from that fire of positivity. It smells so good and sweet and perfect and blissful and let that become a part of you, all that positivity, letting it to connect to the love and the positivity, the high vibrations that it evoked and inspired in others in any way, shape, or form that it did and bring that back into you as you inhale to so just see yourself in front of this fire and it burning and the smoke coming off of it like it's just positive incense attached to you and what you've already done just in this year. The positivity, the, the, the light that you've given, breathe that energy into this beautiful smoke. And really the smoke just 
showing us the air element, showing us how potent our, our energy is, how beautiful and high vibrational it is. It may smell like lilies or roses or your favorite incense, things, jasmine, things that you really, that smell really good to you. And just take that and bring it in, that life force through the air. How important the element of air is to us. It's pure life force. It's so important. And just letting these sweeping energies come through, through the air, through that light element of air that allows for other energies to come and ride through it. And really connecting to your future timelines. And lastly, dear one, I want you to see yourself all lit up in this chamber. But I want you to see it, see yourself as though you're in your own beautiful tree of life. And it's kind of like nesting dolls. Each one of your lifetimes and in incarnation has its own tree. Within the tree is the next tree and the next tree and the next tree and the next tree. Each tree building on itself, each branch that we need to work on coming back in from the last tree. Gaia is saying with each tree coming in, there's more potential for evolution and growth to be stronger, wiser, to be more knowledgeable, to know yourself. And that's what we're doing here. So see yourself in, within all the different trees infinitely that we've been a part of in our incarnations, no matter where we've been. And see yourself within this big, beautiful tree that is your life here today. You're embedded within the tree. You are the tree. Feel the strength, the structure of the tree. Feel the roots going down. Sending energy down. Bringing energy up. And just see yourself electric beautiful electric soul tree your tree of life see yourself from the inside and take yourself outside see that beautiful tree what you look like take yourself back inside and feel all your branches send the energy up to the highest highest branches grow higher branches even if they're tiny at first little little buds of branches send the energy up you're growing the higher branches of your timeline of your timelines here for this lifetime take it all the way up to the top send energy to every single branch and timeline the highest ones and every single one back down to you Know that you need to walk your journey, your path, and that you will climb your tree of life with full support, love, and guidance opened up so you can see, know which branches you want to climb, and know which ones you do not, replacing the lower ones with the higher ones, and this is your tree of life. And again, see the dark moon and all the phases of the light that goes through the days of the cycle of the moon shining upon your tree of life. And see yourself as the tree connected, feeling the air through your branches, feeling the heat of the sun when it is sunny. Feeling the cleansing element of water as it rains down. Feel how wonderful it is to host birds in your branches. Symbolizing your guides and guardians coming in, dropping through their energy into your timeline. As they sit with you, messages, synchronicities, codes of the light for you to follow to make those branches stronger, 
to send energies up and higher. See how you are embedded in this beautiful tree. Feel the crystals within the body. Integrate all of the energies that we are a part of today. All of the crystals opening up your chakras, your wings open. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of work that we did here today, connecting. We're pretty stationary in where what we did here today. Everything coming to and through us mostly. So just allow for that to happen. Allow for the integration of the light to pass through the diamond, through the serpentine, through the turquoise, through the amethyst, through the citrine, through the carnelian, and through the obsidian, all through your body, all through the the rods and the weaving of metals all around you, keeping you nice and strong promoting as much positive energy to come through, blowing out life force energy, connecting to your tree of life in the highest branches possible, allowing for your body to integrate, to accept, to receive, to release, to transmute, to integrate, for your body, your mind, and your soul to come into alignment to trigger further understandings, the awareness that needs to come in. Here with this new moon, see yourself rising as new. See yourself rising from the tree like a phoenix in the fire, the tree turning to beautiful fire, you turning into a beautiful fire phoenix. All the energy of the air and all the planets that are with us in with the energy of the air of Aquarius. Bringing in energy into our fire for our rising of our phoenix. And see yourself rising, rising, expanding out from your tree of life. Reaching out getting bigger and bigger, rising up, flying up, receiving all the energies and all the wisdom that you have and will ever know as you rise, 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 rise into the new space, the new world, the new you. Dissolving what was and becoming new. Anything and everything possible from this moment. Pure and true connection with yourself, with Gaia, your guides and guardians, and each other here incarnate. Feel the purity and the newness coming in. rising, continuing to rise, fire phoenix, rising, rising, energy through your tree of life, tree of life becoming this beautiful ball of fire, turning into the phoenix, all is one and one is all together, the tree, you, the phoenix becoming new, receiving the encodement to help trigger all of this light within you, all of the fire fueled by the air. And just let yourself continue to rise. Rising, rising, rising. As you rise, you dissolve. As you rise, you dissolve. Transmuting everything back to where it came, back to creation. As you rise, you dissolve. As you rise, you dissolve, making your way up, 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 all the way to our beautiful moon as she is dark. 
you rise and you dissolve until there is nothing left but everything. Everything. Dissolving from nothing into everything. The balance of the light and the dark together. See that within you, dissolving into everything. Becoming nothing and infinite all at the same time. That is what it's like to be new. The potential, the hope. The faith for the future, let it all unfold without any blocks at all. Just open, open. Here everything is dark and it's just pure potential. You are the light that will shine through and to your future. May you shine upon everything that is bright for you. High as possible timelines for you always and forever. Now, dear one, lovely soul, just be here in this space for yourself for as long as feels good. Just let the void fill you up with hope. Feel all the energy within you and without you. Feel the support around you. Feel the energy from Gaia. Feel the energy coming down. Feel the energy within you. And just let it be for as long as you can. I want to wish you a very beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here. I thank all of our guides and guardians for bringing us here to this time and place. I want to thank our angelics. I want to thank Gaia. All of our friends all of our planet family that has come to this beautiful rebirthing and waiting room with us as we are being rebirthed into the new beings that we are meant to be. I want to thank you all for your support, love, and guidance for being here. For those of you guided to do this practice, I hope that you truly feel new in your body and system and just before you go to sleep tonight think about this and what you did here and try to fall into that pocket before you go to sleep so you can integrate more thank you again for being here i love you all so much infinite love and blessings don't forget the key is to create i love you already always live in love always and forever. Goodbye for now. I love you.